Throw Gang, we are joined by the Suiting Sultan, the Lord of the Lapel, the Baron of the Black Tie, the Overlord of Oz. <laughs> Not from Sydney, but call him Sweeney because he keeps it double breasted. <laughs> Must work at Popeye's how he's serving up these three pieces. The inseam imam, the crotch Kaiser, that's that real trunk show. You don't fucks, he make tucks. <laughs> Fits aren't ass, but he got that butt on. Oh, you don't fuck with his bespoke? How about you poke these nuts? Your hems are weird, he runs the Southern Hemisphere. Fits so fly when you get off that PJ. The CMT MVP, no STD, but he's one sick cunt, mate. Founder of Patrick Johnson Taylor's Patrick Johnson Patrick, how the hell are you? Wow, that was a lot. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Welcome. I'm good, man. The jet lag's gone after okay. that. Oh, yeah? You're yeah. locked in? I need a hop guy all the time. That's good. I like that. I, like I that. thought that was Tyler's job. Yeah, yeah I good. like it, man. That was great. Yeah, Tyler, I'll send this over in an email. You can just read it, whisper into your boss's ear every morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Softly though, Tyler. I heard those are that those, those are funny email chains that you guys send each other. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. okay. I can leave it at that. <laughs> Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. The first thing we want to do is a little fit check. We're going to walk us through everything you're wearing today. Uh, I'm assuming most of it is you, right? Yeah, most of it is. Um, what do we got on? What do you? Uh, I've got some bracelets on. Oh, we're starting with the. Wrists. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got some. These are by us, but you know, I went to Turkey and then I I, I fell in love with the Turkish men's jewelry. Okay. So I did that bit of silver. And then you culturally appropriated it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 it's the Australian way. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. It's homage. Uh, it's you know, it's it. And then on the other hand, I've got my daughter made me this one, which is you know, she made me promise that I wear it. Uh, which sucks because she's not very good at making bread. <laughs> but you know, she's just a podcast. I'm she? also yeah. I'm also a bit frightened of her, so I'm okay, not going to okay. take it off. And then <laughs> I've got have like a two, little two kids, right? Yeah, I got two. Yeah, boy is she the girl. scarier one? Yeah, yeah, she's okay. she, yeah, she's like a hoarder. I mean, not she's a hoarder. She hoards. <laughs> when I went away, she's put like three teddy bears in my bag, all sorts of clothes from her. It's it's frightening, but we're working through it. So she's trying to share the wealth. I don't know what she's doing. I'm not, I'm not sure. She confuses me, but you what's know, her end sweet. game here? What's that? <laughs> like, what's her end game? Well, let's chat in 10 years. <laughs> see if I'm still alive. Okay. But you know, and she's, she's sweet. So I got that. I got my watch on. It's like Cartier tank, a couple of rings, like a wedding ring and another one when my son was born. Oh, I beautiful. Like little Cartier ones. And then this little signet ring, which has a turtle on it. Oh, What's the turtle signify? I like turtles. <laughs> I like turtles. You're literally the turtle kid who says, yeah, I like I'm the turtles. Turtle kid. I, no, it's, 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 I think I, I had a smiley face on there for years, which I now wear around my neck, but it's sort of to remind me to slow down. Oh, I, that, there you I, go. I that makes sense. Quick. Yeah. And then what Live slow, die old, right? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. And then I've got another, a necklace on with all sorts of little things in here, like little. Red right hand from Nick Cave, and then I got a little ring oh, I got in India. Nick, Ca hold on. Nick Cave gave you a piece of jewelry? No, I bought it from him on his oh. web store. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> Shout out Nick Cave. That dude. would be that would be amazing if you did. You know, I went I went in the summer. We went to Greece and we're in this house in Hydra, which is like way up the stairs. It was like five hundred stairs to get to this house, and I got there. And I was a bit sort of you know, disheartened by the time we got to the top of the stairs and the lady was like, welcome. And I was like, yeah, cool. It's like 400 <laughs> fucking stairs up here and I'm knackered. I got the kids. They're like screaming and complaining. And we got in there in this house and she was like, oh, we just had an Australian come and stay here. I'm like, yeah, cool. There's, we got like this heaps of us. It was Nick Cave. I'm like, oh, <laughs> where did he sleep? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you wash his shit? Yeah, can yeah. I smell the pillows? <laughs> did he have the no pussy blues? Yeah, I, I love him, man. Yeah, I got a few little things on there and then – what else have I got? Um, shoes, Belgians. Okay. Uh, from New York. You know, they're pretty much the only shoe I wear that's not a P. Johnson shoe apart from my running shoes. I love Belgians. They're yeah, the they're the best. When you're in New York, do you always like make it like a, you know, a mission to go uptown? And I always go there. Yeah, you get one pair resold and then yeah. hopefully get another pair, you know. What do you uh, think of the the new store, the redesign? Well, it's the same as the old, old design pretty much. Do you it? think so? I feel like it lost some of its charm. Yeah, I went there a year ago. Was a new store there a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't I know. I mean, when it was, used to be like a straight up piece of shit. Yeah, I like the piece of shit. Yeah. And then they had the old books from like the 70s, the social registers and stuff. Yeah, I mean, but you know, I don't. I like the shoes, man. Same shoes. The regardless. handbags are a bit, a bit, 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 bit weird, but you yeah, know, like I love that space. And I just love the fact they haven't tried to expand it. They haven't tried to do too many like collabs or anything. They're just them. And that's why it's so beautiful. I don't mm. think they've ever done a collaboration, right? Not that we've heard of. I mean, maybe if you maybe we manifest a P. Johnson Belgian shoes collaboration. But I wouldn't want to do that. No? They, should, they should be them. Man. Right. They, they do the best job. It's the best shoe. You know, like. I think when Bernie Madoff got arrested, he had like, you know, how they many put pairs? Him, they put them all up for auction. Yeah, yeah. I know, but he had tiny little feet. Two dozen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, dude. He, he might have been overcompensating with that uh, fucking Ponzi scheme, yeah, you know? With the Ponzi. Um, and then I, those shoes, and I'm wearing socks, which 
PJ? Yeah, oh, they got my initials on. I think I bought this from Land's End. Okay. I love Land's End. <laughs> a little, little high-low action. Yeah, whatever. is it low? I don't know. By the time it gets to Australia, it's expensive. Oh, true. <laughs> but, the shipping, yeah. Yeah, and then what am I wearing here? I got a seersucker suit on. It's a wool seersucker. It's sort of like the jacket's made in this sort of forest air yeah, style. Mm. I don't know if you know, remember Arnie's from Paris, the store Arnie's? No. It was my favorite store, and these two French brothers had it. And... It was incredible. Like it was a tailor, like a country kind of tailor thing. It sounds it sounds really stuffy and awful. <laughs> it was the coolest thing ever. The store was amazing. It's now Baluti store okay. near, near Bon Marche. It was so sad. Baluti bought the business and it was a cool – anyway, I love that and I collect vintage Arnie's and this is one of the pieces I had when they shut down. They made it actually originally for the Cabuzier. Oh, wow. The jacket and anyway, so like we re recreated it and changed it a bit. So that's in a wool seersucker, trousers, belt, like a Western belt we do with Andersons out of Italy. Mm -hmm. God, this is a lot. I'm gonna have a break. Yeah, you weren't, um, you weren't ice, a lot. Ice cotton, ice cotton t-shirt, Pete yeah. Johnson, and then uh, Avedon glasses that we that, that we make. What uh, what about the panties? Oh, under here. Yeah, I don't down know. under. I've got no idea. <laughs> my sister buys me every year for my. I'm a Christmas Eve baby, so she buys oh, me for that my sucks. birthday. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's okay. I'm Double like, dip it down. I'm old enough now. Like it's okay. But in the Southern Hemisphere, it's Boxing Day, no. No, no, no. It's still Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Boxing Day is like the day that. after. I know, I know. I'm nice. to, I made a bad joke. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Sorry. I'm not, I'm bit, that was a good one. Um, so your sister buys you underwear as yeah, a combination? Yeah, she buys me like a dozen pairs for, for my Christmas one for, birthday. One, one per month. But yeah, I don't for know the where year. from. They used to be from American Apparel. Okay. And what I, are they now? I don't, from some I, other I sex criminal? Not, which, you know, that was kind of sexy, American Apparel, right? Yeah, if you're a fucking 12-year-old girl. It's really creepy. Yeah, exactly, dude. So I'm glad they're not from there, and then, and that's it. That's me. Oh, I've got this uh, fucking cashmere sweater that I, I thought it was going to be cold today. Mm. So that's it. That's me. There and it you're is. Sipping on a bottle of Poland Spring. Yeah. Uh, so, from our so refrigerator. Fresh. It's so fresh. All right, yeah. fit check, drink check complete. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of the only podcast that matters. Patrick Peach. <laughs> you uh, so there's stores in correct me if I'm wrong. New York, London, Tuscany, and down under Sydney, right? Yeah, we don't have a store in Tuscany. We've got a factory there. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we started a factory there eight years ago, I'm going to say. Nine years ago. Nine years ago now, um, which was, yeah. Was pretty well, between the three there. stores, between New York, London, and Sydney, is that right? Yeah. Is there like a universal P. Johnson guy or like does it kind of depend on where they're from and what the context is that they're shopping? You know, it changes from place to place for sure. I think it's like, for a number of reasons, mainly because of the weather. Like we mm. don't get the cold you get here and it's pretty hot in Australia. Um, we've got store in Brisbane in Australia. We've got a couple in Melbourne as well. It kind of even changes from city to city. But I think uniformly there's – I mean, Americans are slightly more formal in the way in business dress. Like really? You've got like a proper city here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, sure. we're, like, we're basically a beach, you know, yeah. beach towns. So there's a little bit more formality. But overall the guys, he's pretty similar. Like he's pretty – pretty kind of relaxed kind of guy, I think, in terms of his attitude towards tailoring. Mm. Okay. We don't usually get those guys that are a little bit more sort of like- Not the nerds. The fedora men's wear crowd. <laughs> oh, God. Like, How do you do, my lady? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's have a virtual cigar smoke. Dude. But they're approaching, um, they're approaching more casually and more and like- if that's your thing, a virtual cigar smoke, then that, that's fine. I don't, don't, don't hate on me, but that's weird. <laughs> so it's more of, a ca more of a casual approach to tailoring. I think so. It's like a pragmatic- kind of casual approach, I suppose. Aussies on a whole are pretty pragmatic in the way they approach things. You know, they're pretty... Um, That's so not necessarily the word I would use to describe them. Prag, what would you use? Sick cunt, probably. Yes. <laughs> That's two words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True, that is there two words. some of them. We've got... We've got wow. Keep a count on how many feel, times just sick You made cunt. me feel like I'm at home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that guy... The guys like that, I mean, we it varies though, you know. You get We have older clients, younger clients, yeah. everything in between. But I think overall, they're generally pretty... Pretty relaxed. What location has the best dressed customer? Uh, the single best dressed customer? No, oh, like <laughs> just yes. overall. Uh, I'd probably say, I mean, New York's pretty hard to beat. Yeah. You know, in terms of like, I think some of the best dressed men in the world are in New York. Like, really? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, you go, I go uptown and you walk in the park there and you see those guys, you're like, incredible the way they're dressed. Is that because they're like not trying at all? And not working quite often. <laughs> <a bit. laughs> I think that's the other one. Not yeah. stressed. No, I think it's just like, it's just like uh, the grooming's amazing. I think there's this sense of purpose, like in terms of like, 
the clothing really look the clothing looks like they belong to them you're mm. in a major city where there's a re- real reason to get dressed up right. like that and there's a history too you sure. know we're a, we're a pretty young country in terms of in the in the mod in in the sense of being western colonized country australia so we're still kind of young and learning in that sense. Mm, young, um, dumb, and full of cum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As we all once were. Yeah. yeah. Some of us still. Got to start somewhere. Which yeah. location would you say has the cheapest clientele? <laughs> the cheapest clientele. Yeah. Who's just Ob- coming in and like. London. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Brexit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, those guys. No, I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe, probably London, I suppose. I don't know. Do Is, London, do, does the London customer turn their fucking stiff upper lip and nose up at an Australian tailor? I Since think they- a bit like in London, there's that thing when we open there because we're sort of, you know, I, I just go into everything with a lot of enthusiasm and you go and some guys are like, oh, what's an Australian doing here? And you're like, <laughs> fuck off. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing my thing. You don't have to come and buy stuff yeah, here. Right. There's a bit of that. But then I think after the years you kind of wear them down and then they ignore you a bit. But, yeah, there's a little bit <laughs> of that. But, like, there's a bit of that everywhere. Actually, I'd say in the States there's not. Everyone's enthusiastic here. They're, like, kind of happy for you. But. There's a bit of that in the UK, but it it's always, you know, it always rains there, it, man. Like, in London, was there a learning curve to like get like a, tra- like that, such that traditional Savile Row kind of like stuffier, like tailoring, like to get those guys to maybe dress down a bit? You know, I think we went in there kind of wanting to do our thing and keep it pretty pure, like, and the clients that kind of gravitated towards us, they weren't looking for that Savile I love that Savile Row thing. I think it's incredible. Like, I love what they do. Um, that true bespoke Savaro yeah. scene, you know, which I think that should only be really be used on Savaro that <laughs> word, but it gets used everywhere, but anyway, whatever. Um, I love what they do. It's amazing, you know, but we do something different. And we got a lot of clients, mainland Europeans mainly are our bulk of clients in London, like mm. uh, a lot a lot of Spanish, a lot of Italians and things that want something a bit softer and a bit more relaxed. So those guys kind of gravitated towards us. And over time you work out, you know, there's room for everyone. Sure. Um, yeah. How yeah. equitable. How would you describe though the the Pete Johnson like what's the house style of your suiting? Uh it's I think it's it's a pretty relaxed one. We 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 specialize in really soft tailoring. That's what we do. So mm. um it's a pretty relaxed kind of look. Cuts a bit looser than most in terms of a little, little bit wider in the width. A little uh, flowy. For, for comfort. Got some you know? flow. Like we gotta we gotta move around. Yeah. Um so that's like the house kind of style is generally one to relax, but you know, we kind of approach it. With all of our clients, you know, you're going on a bit of a journey and, and you're kind of trying to take them on that journey. And some of them come to us and they want like a really skinny suit. And you're like, you know, off the bat, I'm not going to go, what are you doing? Like an idiot. Like an idiot. But <laughs> Who wants a skinny suit? Well, there's people that do. You know, Spaniards. You know, there's, yeah. there's people <laughs> yeah. that do. Italians. But, but, yeah, but like, yeah. Have you tried a pair of trousers on in Italy? Like it's, yeah. it's painful, We're familiar. Like, yeah. the, the rise is that high. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> but you take it, you go on that journey with them, right? And you go, cool, let's let's work it out and let's get you to a place where you're dressing in a way that's probably a bit better for you. I mean, there's a reason why most of the best dressed people in the world are in their sort of 70s, all right? Mm. It takes time, but it's about going They're that not journey. trying to fucking, uh, you know, tighten up on their cock. Yeah, exactly. They understand. Well, there's, or maybe by that age, you do. Yeah, well, you your, balls are hanging by you your, your balls are by your knees. You need, you need some room, bit. you know? You need a but different you know, rise. Yeah. You want to go on that journey with the customer and, and sort of get them to a point where they're dressing and in a way that they look really comfortable and they're, they're happy and all that. And that can take like nothing or that can take a long time. So you got to kind of go down that journey and not be too forceful. I don't like when people go, you should wear it like this. You should do that. R- rules around clothing are ridiculous. Like, right. It's do, a ridiculous concept. Do young men, when they come in, do they feel like, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. Um, when young men come in, do they kind of feel like they know what they want or are they open to that guidance? Um, but now that you know everyone has, everyone's an expert. Everyone can just like go online and and read up and do their own research. But when they come in, are they like hard and set on what they want? And you're like, actually, that's maybe not best for your body type or for like what you're the context you're trying to get dressed for. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean some people come in with like full Pinterest boards, right? And, and like <laughs> wow, their mother-in-law, fucking there. loser, like bringing a picture to the barber, <laughs> and their of, mother-in-law, yeah, like, and you're like, haircut. mate, you are gonna have a <laughs> shit one. It's gonna take forever. Like some people come in with that attitude, but mostly I think, listen, like what we do, you know, like I liken it to like you know when you're walking down the street. And you're having a good day and maybe you're not wearing your AirPods for once and you're walking down and you're feeling really good and you've got that little movie playing in your head. Okay. At the best version of yourself. 
like what we're trying to do when we get you into one of our spaces is try and work out what that what that movie is, right? Oh, so and you're we, encouraging main character syndrome is what you're saying. Obviously. <laughs> right, but you know what I mean? We're trying to work that out and get that out of people and it's different for everyone and we kind of we try and create environments that people feel really comfortable doing that in. It's not like a hard and fast retail environment. It's pretty relaxed. Like our clients will hang out in our, in our showrooms a fair bit. They can feel comfortable. They're not like looking like some English clubhouse with old leather or they're not trying yeah. to be – they're just very – you know, us kind of spaces that hopefully people feel pretty comfortable in, but also a bit inspired. And we're trying to encourage that in there. And so then we can actually work out who they are. And, you know, sometimes you need to plug them full of booze to do that. <laughs> sometimes you need to like, you know, sometimes it takes time, but that's what we're trying to work out. That's our goal in the end, you know, to try and do that. So, you know, you asked if people come in with an idea. Sometimes they do. Yeah. And sometimes your job is to go, I think like what you're saying is like, you want to do this, but maybe that's not the way there. Mm. Why don't we try this instead? Because, you know, you kind of want to get them in a better way. That's kind of where I get to with it. But, yeah, I mean, men can, men can, um, you know, you're talking to an Australian, so Australian guys aren't, <laughs> aren't as like, generally they're like, mate, what, should, what, what do I wear? What do I do? Okay. It's, it's kind of like, it's cool like that, right? Aussies are generally pretty like, yeah, the you're, receptive you're the clothing guy. What yeah. do I do? Blank canvas. Yeah, exactly. The receptive so, not being the expert. Yeah, I think a little bit more maybe. But, you know, we find that everywhere people are pretty open. And then some of the guys you get in, they go, I want this exact jacket. I like this. And you're like, yeah, cool. Let's do that. That's okay. a great idea sort of thing. So it varies, but it's a it's a, it's a a journey. Yeah. Not well, a destination. Right. <laughs> We're still, uh, just to you know, continue looking under the hood a little bit, what is P. Johnson's number one seller? Number one seller, I mean, as a product? Yeah. Embarrassingly, our caps, but we only really do, we only sell them online, and we got, we do four a year. <laughs> we do four drops a year of caps, and they sell out in like two seconds, like really? online. You can only buy them online, so we do that four times a year, and that's it. And yeah, they're our number one seller by a mile. Is that because yeah. people want to like rep like rep the brand because like what all the things you said like what you represent, but like to James's point, it is probably a cheap item, right? If you sort price low to high. Like the entry level coming into our business, it's not super, it's not super easy sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's value for sure, <laughs> but it's not super easy. So like we started them actually in COVID when we were like, no, it was just pre COVID actually our first hat drop. And we had all these guys and generally younger guys. And they're like, I really want to, I want to come in. They used to come in the showroom and have a coffee. They kind of walk around and they're like, yeah, I'm going to get like, I'll get a shirt. I'll get this. And I felt bad. I'm like, oh, man, like this is, Let's do something. So we did it as like one hat drop and I'm like, oh, these won't sell. Bang, gone. I thought there was a glitch. I was like, what <laughs> And then it kind of grew from there. And now we're like only four times a year we're right. going to do it. That's it. And they're just online. You can't get them in our store. And we do hat and T-shirts. And the T-shirts are all limited edition as well. Um, and I turned my phone off that day. Like, <laughs> I'm serious because you just get like. Because so people, people are hitting you like, yo, yeah, what's on, up, man? man? I, I missed out on the blue. And Tyler does the same, man. All these guys. But that's no, cool. It's a nice way you can buy into the brand without having to sure. come through the full right. process. And it's a, yeah, easier. What's the most popular like uh, piece of suiting? Like most style. popular piece of suiting, I think, would be like a semi-casual navy suit. So mm. a really unstructured navy jacket with a trouser. Guys usually Delicious. get two, two pairs of trousers and pretty lightweight. We mm. usually do – our main wool we'll do from that is like this um, wool we weave up in Biella that's like a – it's got no actual additional stretch but a natural stretch, really, really slouchy in a navy. That would be our most popular kind of everyday suit. And mm. then on the other side, we do a lot of evening wear. A lot, so it would be in the tuxedo zone, and we do a lot of silk. Right, I love silk. I'm a big yeah. Silk's the best. You're man. a pimp, dude. I love it. I wish. <laughs> when should what a would man- I be like as a pimp? I always wonder. <laughs> yeah. You know, the friendliest pimp. Your friendly neighborhood. Yeah, pimp. I, yeah, I don't think it would work, but yeah, we do. We do that. So t- in, in the tuxedo, well, you couldn't be peddling like any sick cunt if you were. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they they mostly are pretty sick, but yeah. We'll, yeah. When should a guy? So this. I've been to, I had two black tie weddings this summer and I have a tuxedo, but a lot of my friends uh, in their now mid to late thirties don't. When should a guy invest in a tuxedo? I mean, mid to late thirties, I think your friends need to grow up a bit and get one a bit earlier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Hey, he said it. <laughs> no, I mean, I think- I, 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 was, I was saying the same thing. Yeah, you get one, tu- I mean, you can have one tuxedo that can run you pretty well true. And I think if you go for something that's pretty easy, don't get it cut too tight. Yeah. Uh, so you can give you room to grow. And we, we put a lot of allowance in ours, but- yeah, get one in your early 30s and r- run it through. I think that's that's the way. What should a guy's first suit be? First suit for, oh, depends on the guy, man. I, I don't know. But like, say like, what, you're an office guy or? I don't know. 
Let's just generalize. If there's only like the first suit that would work with the most people, what's the first suit with the most people? But, but you're not you're not an office guy, so you don't have like the need to wear a suit to work every day. But yeah. like you have the, the usual obligations of you know events, weddings, well, let's maybe take the, a nice a nice dinner out. Yeah, let's take the tuxedo out of it. Whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's like a it's definitely a suit that you cut a bit more casually. You can wear the jacket as a separate. Mm, you yeah. get a lot of those events where. It's not a full suit. It's not. We call that lounge suit. Is that a thing here? It's, it's the mm. weirdest. I mean, I, I'm. I can Super use weird. like uh, context. Yeah, it's a weird thing. To figure I don't know, it out. Cocktail. Yeah. yeah, I think they could. So, like, you can wear you can wear that jacket separately. I think for most people, that's a navy. It's also a pretty good transseasonal color. Looks good on most skin types in the city. And I'd be going for like a really slouchy wool, but not one that's like your classic suiting one. One right. that's got a bit of texture to it, drapes really well, and something that travels really well too. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the trousers. I mean, I. Trousers, trousers, whatever. But I do like double pleated trousers with a belt, nice. with, with a belt, um, and keep them reasonably slouchy. So you can wear those casually as right. well, and yeah, give yourself options. Is that jacket you described? Is that a notch lapel? Is that a peak That's lapel? A notch for sure. Is that a three two roll, two button? What are we thinking? I mean, it depends on your body. Right? Okay, so okay, like, interesting. I think it depends on your body and your shape and your shoulder and your shoulder shape. But overall, like if you're crazy high shouldered, maybe you have to get a slightly higher notch on your slightly higher notch position, but I like a reasonably low lapel. Yeah. I like things sort of slouchy, a low gorge, not like up like this. Yeah. And I think off the bat, you're either going to do two button or three roll two, depending okay. on how tall you are. But yeah, I think anything like a, just a classic three buttons. I mean, yeah. that's fun, but and, that's not an everyday. And thing. one more ethical question. Can a guy wear that P Johnson ball cap with a suit? That is an ethical question. Yeah. A dilemma. Yeah. Some might yeah. Say. What, I uh, yeah, hundred percent. Do yeah? you want? Yeah. You wear you wear about? baseball hats with a suit. Yeah, before I got my hair transplanted, <laughs> but now I've got all this beautiful hair. <laughs> I was gonna say you've been touching it the whole time. You got yeah, it, baby. Yeah. Where'd, Looks you go? Good. Where'd you go? Turkey. I paid for it. I should be able to touch it. Turkey. I don't know. We're yeah. Went to Miami. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh. <laughs> yo, send me the plug, dude. I'm trying yeah. to get on yeah. your level, dog. Man, that the cat, plug, man. literally. That cat it's something money. I never thought I would have done. I was like in a pool with my wife for while on holidays and this guy, I saw this guy and he came up and I was like, oh, hey man, what, how you going? Introduced himself to me as a client of ours from Dr. Miami. Melbourne. No, no, no. <laughs> and, and I met his wife. I was like, what do you do? She goes, I work for a hair pill company. I was like, oh, I take those hair pills. You know, the pills to say it. And, she, and he just looks at me and goes, you're too far gone, man. <laughs> Don't take the pills. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, that's a bit mean, isn't it? He goes, you need a head transplant. He organized the whole thing for me. He's go to my guy, go to do this, go do that. And I made it a boys trip. I went with a friend. <laughs> Did everyone get the a best hair- boys trip ever? <laughs> everyone, everyone got a transplant. <laughs> yeah, everyone, even people wow. that didn't need to. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah wow. it was just, some guys got beards. Guys with hairlines down to yeah, their exactly. eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Like that. yeah, but the, no, I didn't. I couldn't do the turkey. I think it's a bit, it's a bit strict. I yeah. Don't know. Anyway, looks but, great. Where were we? So the cat money paid for that for that hat. <laughs> money. Yeah. Cat money paid off. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you this. Uh, okay, so after the guy gets the first suit, what should maybe? his end rotation look like? Obviously, I'm sure you have. How many suits do you own? I've got a few. Like, <laughs> like what? Like a few dozen? You know what? Like at any one time, I probably have 12. But like okay. I, I give all, like at the end of a certain period, I give them to the new guys studying at work and they'll it'll rotate back in. So I'm a bit, I'm cheating a bit because I, I, I right. get rid of a few. But yeah, I mean, I think. Well, what's the right number for There is a no dude. right number. It needs to work with your wardrobe, right? right. Like if, if you're wearing a lot of denim, you're probably going heavier on jackets mm. and but if you're like, if you're, you know, going into work, like you can, you can run pretty well off three suits. If you've got an extra pair of trousers, like run, run, running with them for a bit, but where do you want to take this? Like with your tailoring, you want to take it casually as well, which, which, which would be fun. Like, so you ro- rotate. So I think uh, two casual jackets, three normal suits, a tux um, is really good. And then you might have one really good winter coat like that you can kind of wear like in, 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 in a kind of statement way, like bang, like a good polo coat or something mm, like sure. that. Um, and then 55 pieces of outerwear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that your vice is just jackets like like proper outerwear? I mean, my vice is it's one of my vices. We're not we're not talking about vices. Today, right. Well, yeah. clothing vices my specifically. Kids could be watching yeah. this. Uh is is collecting outerwear, especially yeah. like vintage Arnie's. Arnie's yeah. is your is your grail, your white whale. Oh, yeah, no one knows it either. I feel like I feel like well, I'm now like, everyone knows. Yeah, so yeah. thank you so much. Uh, by the way, I've got that and old Armani, like really, really early Armani, um, pre sort of pre sort of mid nineties. Um, old Saint Laurent. Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of my archive for outerwear is the biggest, which is interesting because I'm in Australia and it's not like yeah. a big outerwear place, but I love that. Yeah, is that because you reference them like when it comes to design? Or I just is love it? them, man. I find yeah. them beautiful. Those outerwear from that period, it was just. Yeah. 
the stuff was so well thought out and so well designed and the fabrics were so beautiful and it still had this influence there of craftsmanship in there in, in like a real way because we were just – yeah, we've been in man- like industrial manufacturing for a while but the couture and all that stuff was on the side and all these companies were still doing that so it had a lot of that influence in there. I think I like the silhouettes and time gives it a certain romance as well. For sure. But um, yeah, I reference them a lot and and sort of like I love it. It's nice having that. What do you why do you think that there's this like fetishization of specifically like the late eighties, early nineties Armani happening right now? That's um, our age, man, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, well the stuff it's you just grew a up cycle. in. I mean, yeah, I think that's the stuff you grew up in. I mean, with Armani, he's number one always for me. He's always been number one. Um and I think it's, I mean, take away that Kith collaboration, which I kind of, I don't even want to talk about, but. We've talked about how, on the pod, it's dog shit. We can make, I have it. Okay. I mean, I don't want to be rude because no, I don't know the guys from Kith at all, but I was like, dude, that's like bad current season on money. What the fuck? <laughs> were you low, were you low key? Little, you were you a little kid? jealous? Jealous is like the wrong word. I don't really get jealous. Are you full but of I was rage? Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Furious? Like, I don't know, man. Like, obviously I've done it. Our money's not going to get me to a collab. Who am I? But all I'm saying is like, I mean, if you're watching, <laughs> George, George, all I'm yeah. saying is like the opportunity you have to do a collab right with Armani, now. like, and I don't know the structure of it. Perhaps they forced the hand, but it's like, it's so rich. I mean, just watch like Made in Milan, the right. original Scorsese film. Just watch that and just rip that shit off. That's yeah. better. Like, but the films and everything, the infrastructure you had around it were really cool. I mean, but I suppose it's a marketing company, right? Absolutely. Like, so whatever. But that about, aside, like- Do you I like, think, what, what were your thoughts on uh, our legacy workshop and Emporio Armani? From yeah, last I year. mean that had, that was a bit more interesting. I thought like that had something a little bit more th- thoughtful about it, yeah. and I think that made more sense to me. And they actually referenced like real shit versus like designing lo- like a logo lockup turtlenecks. Yeah, they and, you they know. didn't only reference it; they kind of understood it. I yeah. think which was the which was right. the key to it. But anyway, who the fuck am I? But like <laughs> you're Patrick li- Johnson, baby. That's yeah, who the fuck like, you are. All that stuff, like you know, whatever. We're living in a we're living in a time when you know you got to get clicks, I suppose. But I. I love all Armani in that way for his approach, right? And it was probably around that time, like you know, it's um, it's just beautiful. He's, I'm a fabric guy, right? And everything for me starts with fabric. My whole design process starts with fabric, and and he was he has always been the best yeah, at that. Yeah. So I think it goes back to that for me. His color palette's amazing, and he's got the best boat in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Seen that? Have you I've seen not, the I've not seen Armani's boat no. in Maine? His, his like super yacht, right? No, right like okay, double height ceiling. Anyway, <laughs> very cool. Are you? So you mentioned like you know, oh, it's a game of clicks. It's marketing. Like, are you? Do you play the game? Like, are you happy to play the game? Are you kind of reticent to play it? Like, do you? Well, kind I obviously of- don't understand the game when I make, <laughs> right. when I make comments like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do I like, play the game? I don't. I don't think I do for the I mean, for the brand that has your name on it. Yeah, I mean, I think like. The answer is probably yes in some way, but we just do our thing. Like, and I think that's the advantage of being an Australian brand. Like, like we're at the bottom of the world. Like, mm. I'm a country bump. Can I get that right? I'm, I'm in the Adelaide. We're, we're from the yeah. I mean, Adelaide, full country bump. Made in Adelaide. Adelaide. <laughs> made in Adelaide. <laughs> yeah. P. Johnson and Crystal Meth. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> it's it's essentially like we get that. We understand that, and that's powerful because we can take everything from the rest of the world and reinterpret it in like our way, in a modern way. There's no history holding us back. There's nothing. And that's what I, I love. I find that quite powerful. So we're able just to do our own thing, go at our own pace, uh, run our own game. And it's not that I'm yeah. pushing anything else away. Like I've got a lot of people I admire what they do and I love it and I love it. But we just do what we do and we're able to do right. it. And it's nice. It's a nice way to be. I mean, menswear does move at a glacial pace, especially relative to like women's fashion and couture and everything. Besides Armani and, and Arnie's, like where else have you been turning – to for inspiration lately man i mean mostly just films for me like yeah. that's where it sort of started always when i was a kid i watched a lot of movies a lot of old movies you can ask uh, him well i'm just waiting to like have you name some movies here like what are the most some of the most stylish movies that are like all time for you i mean anything visconti did mm-hmm. i mean he's amazing you could freeze frame any one any one of his frames it's amazing you know what I watched recently? I was just in Tokyo, but I watched the Outrage trilogy. Have you seen mm-hmm. that? So Fuck good, dude. Boom. Is the way did the- Oh, beat. Yeah. He 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 directed it. Yeah. And start and Takeshi, yeah. Greedy. But and in bad because there's that what is a is it bad cop is another movie that yeah, he's yeah, in? I yeah. think Yoji did all the tailoring yeah, yeah, for amazing. that. Amazing. Yeah. But the, the the costume in that was just next level. I mean, yeah. I love a lot of Yakuza reference for sure. us in terms of with tailoring, because they're that way. 
Uh, I watched a really good film the other week called La Riffa, The Raffle. It's Monica Belushi's first film that she did. <laughs> and the director's basically like it's a soft porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a medium to soft porn depending on what, what your porn double, taste is. So we're going to see some double-breasted? Depends double on your breasted. porn taste. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But that's incredible and it's set in Milan, La Riffa, The Raffle. And the whole concept is about like – her husband dies. I'm not ruining it because it's the start of the film. <laughs> and, also, what? And she needs, to, old, like, she needs to find out how she's going to survive. So she's raffling herself off to, the, to whoever's going to okay. be Okay, let's go, dude. And it's, like, and it's Monica Belushi and it's like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. That's cool. Uh, what else is there? Like the original Roadhouse is amazing. That was all Armani. Mm -hmm. the latest, what about Jake, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal wearing Capital? Yeah. The new Roadhouse. <laughs> well, man, I didn't even watch the latest one because um, what's the MMA fighter? Man. He freaks me out. McGregor. Oh, yeah. He yeah. freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> He's so coked up all the time. Yeah, he, he method acted that role for sure, <laughs> yeah. dude. Have you have you seen the original? Yeah, of course. You know when he's fighting the bad guy on the did I make this up? He's fighting the bad guy on the on the on the river. You know, the he's fighting him, he's having that big scene, and the bad guy says to him, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's you're like, that is that would I mean you'd lose that fight. You'd be like, yeah. fuck, and you would win, actually. <laughs> yeah. He'd lose. That is that's, that's hot take. Thorough. Sam Elliott is the hottest guy in that movie. It's not Schwazy or IP. The in, mo in most movies he's in, <laughs> including uh Star is Born. Yeah. So there you go. Um Wow. Uh, <laughs> what else is there? Um, that's a lot, dude. That's yeah, a nice a lot. La laundry I, I, list. I'm a big. I, I like. I, I watch. I watch a lot so of. That, films. And that's what inspires and uh, yeah, like influences the things that we see coming out of your yeah, that and brain. Vintage shopping. Like I'll be in Japan like four times a year. That's where I get most of my vintage. And I've got a couple of guys around who kind of find stuff for me. And the plugs. over in Paris. Yeah. Can yeah, you? Are you going to gatekeep or can you tell us your one must visit vintage store in Japan? Just one. Just give us For one. For women's, I really like Layla. Okay. Do you know Layla? No. Layla's amazing and there's a women's and a men's store. The men's store is like in a weird apartment block, like hidden away, but okay. you can find it on Instagram. Layla's really good. I don't gatekeep anything. Fuck. Um, Keep them coming. I love that. There's these young guys in oh, – they're not in Tokyo. Um, I don't know. That's probably my favorite, mm. I'd say. They've just got interesting stuff and really well-made stuff. Weird like – I mean, any like the if you want to get like Margiela Hermes period, I think like the Olsen Twist sisters have all of that. Now. Oh yeah, so that's <laughs> <laughs> right. they catch that out. Yeah, the guys from Totem are trying to get yeah. some. Sure, sure, sure. They got a duopoly yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, taking nothing away from them. The can you tell Olsons, us? But you know, can you tell us why? You know, from someone that's like doing some of our favorite stuff in tailoring right now, like why is tailoring seemingly, and we think so, why is tailoring coming back in such a big way right now? And don't tell me it's return to the office. <laughs> well, here's the economy a bit. Like you look at 08 and it was like one of the highest suit sale thing per capita. So I think people are like, yeah, let's let's let's, let's get dressed up. I but need I think, a suit for a job interview. Yeah. yeah, but I think the other thing, okay, it's sick, cool, but I think you think about it like you had this big boom and all these Silicon Valley billionaires with the next big boom and the billionaires and then you had like the Zuckerbergs and stuff and they're like, oh, I'm going to wear a hoodie and like be ironic. You're like, okay. <laughs> and now you're a fucking adult Zuckerberg. You get to dress up a bit and then don't – that awful grey suit you wore, just forget yeah. that. But Trash. I think that cycle's happening where the guys are going through that. They're like, no, I actually like want to dress, dress a right. little bit better and I want to own tailoring but in a way that like suits me and it's a little bit more casual and they've got the options now. It's no longer like stiff, heavy tailoring. It's like there's options. So I think – I think that's sort of where it's at. Guys want to kind of dress up, take themselves a bit more seriously. And yeah. As a guy who's been doing that loose look for a long time, is there any part of you that's kind of like not bummed out, but is like a, a little annoyed that that's become such like a look du jour where there's all these other brands kind of doing what you've always done and been like best in class in? No, I reckon that's great, man. Like I reckon that's, did you see the Saint Laurent? Did you see that show they just did? Oh, with the women? Oh, that was women's wear. Yeah. But how good was it? Yeah. Did you awesome. like it? Yeah, I, I mean, thought it was fantastic. They've been, they've been killing that telling, but that's like a pretty, but some, a lot of that is yeah, strong yeah, yeah. That's shoulder. Yeah, not soft, but it's yeah. soft through here. Yeah, for sure. It's all fused, but it's soft through here. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I love the fact that people are kind of finding that style and, you know, it'll evolve over time. I'm sure I'll go into something else, but I'll never go away from comfort. Right. Without comfort, you're not, you're not looking good. It's king, as they say. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is king. Um, no, I like the fact that everyone's going in that way. I think it just makes everyone look better. Like That's I true. Mean, It'll go away. Some uh, someone will come come around and do something stiff and all that stuff in a bit, but hopefully not for a while. Okay. Yeah, we got we got some time. We got some time. As someone that's been in this for a minute now, how many years have you been, have you been like in menswear? Actually, you know, I in I, fashion. 
I was talking to Tyler this morning and I said, oh, we've been in New York for six years. He's like nine and a half now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Okay. So then I was kind That's of Aussie math. So I think we're like 15 <laughs> years. It's 2008 I started P. Johnson, but then I was in London for about six or seven yeah, before you're- that. And, but like – not that long, like okay. in comparatively. Right. 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say someone that's been here for decades. Yeah. What is your hottest take or most unpopular opinion on menswear? Unpopular opinion? Yeah. Fuck. I don't know. But that um, you hold near and dear yeah. and stay true and stick to your guns with every single time. You zigging when everyone else zags. and you Me vote. zigging when everyone else zags. Yeah. Um, so, that's a good question. I mean, you. I think this idea of just being a... Like wardrobe building in the way, this is a bit of a boring answer, but wardrobe building in the way that like just take your time, just chill, like just build good quality pieces, buy good pieces in your wardrobe. Don't be in this rush. And I'm someone who rushes. Like <laughs> I, I got a turtle on my ring just to go, just, just, <laughs> yeah. relax, mate, just relax. How many coats do you want? But yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> They're an investment. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. <laughs> a business yeah. expense. Yeah, just slow down and try and like find your style. Don't try right. and jump on other people's style. And I think that's really, really hard right now because we're all looking at our gadgets the whole time. And we're like, fuck, that person's doing that and that doing that. And then the whole algorithm is designed to make us buy more, buy more, mm-hmm. buy more. It's just, just chill, man. Like you're not going to find your answers in this stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. This is not important. The world <laughs> yeah. doesn't need Patrick Johnson. I don't save people's lives. There's no... Like I'm not, I can't perform a heart surgery. Like just chill. This is just about beauty for me. I just love beautiful clothing. That's why I've always been in it. So I think it's just like, just don't believe the hype. This stuff is not, this is not important like at all. There's too many clothes in the world, but if you're going to do it, do it well and just slow down. Well, did that answer your question? I absolutely. Think, no, that was great. That's great absolutely. advice. That's foundational advice, yeah. man. Stop trend hopping. Yeah. Right. Or yeah, chasing a bit, trends. A little bit's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and take, and take your time. Be interesting. Be interesting. Yeah, take take your, time. your time. But uh, you know, as someone that someone that has maybe made mistakes of, them, of your your own, or have seen like guys, you know, uh, maybe rush a little too hard. Like, what is the biggest fuck up guys m- tend to make when they're first getting to tailoring? Well, like you have to make mistakes. Like that's the whole point. Like, okay. I remember back in the day. I mean, Porter, who I work with, one of my business partners, I work with. He he regularly sends me a photograph of myself. I know. <laughs> Can we get that photo, Tyler? No, Can we get I'm no? in a bright blue suit with bright <laughs> orange uh, what? Nikes on at Pitti, like back in the day. Okay. And back in the day, what, what year was this? <laughs> I like maybe 2010. Okay. Yeah, something. back in the day. And I thought I was fucking the revolutionary. Yeah. Nikes with a suit. Right. Fucking money. You say, do you, what about uh, sneakers with, the, we, we said cap with a suit, okay. I think sneakers so. Yeah, hundred percent cap with a suit. Well, sneakers okay. with a suit. I mean, it's all okay. Okay, it's all fine. Or, okay. Oh, thanks, thanks, mate. Thank you for that. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there it is. oh yeah. banger. Yeah, and that and that is that, that is powder blue. I've got to be. Way. I've got to. Yeah, it's powder blue, right? <laughs> you look like uh, Jim Carrey and, and Jeff of, Bridges and Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the bare essentials. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely made mistakes, but I think it's that dressing for yourself thing. Like I, I don't, I don't, you know. Some people come in, they don't understand how they want to dress or what they want to do. Just understand just a little bit of it. Start with the basics and build up from there. There used to be a system around this, right? Like back in the day, there was a system and a structure before like uh, ready to wear fashion took over mm-hmm. and there was a thing and you went and you went and did, you went through, you went and got your first suit and that was a process, right? Yeah. And however you went and did that, whether you're doing the full bespoke Savile Row thing or whether you're going and getting your first suit in, I don't know, like Sears or wherever, <laughs> wherever you go here. But – that used to be a thing and you thought it out and it was like a process and it was a bit of an education and you build up from that. And now there's, that just doesn't exist, right? It's just like, boom, go buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. So I think just chill down, just build your foundation well and then you find your personality through mm. that. You can find which way you want to take it and then, I don't know, maybe you'll be going crazy, bearing full Izzy Miyake top and bottom. <laughs> I've always wanted to be that guy. Yeah. And now it's become like a real thing. Yes. And I'm like, and it's gone for me. I was, when I, oh, I just now I was with a mate, um, and I said, listen, I think I want to do this. He goes, you can't do that. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that moment became gone. like a type of guy. It's a type of guy. And you're not that guy. Don't try and be that guy. I was like, well, I want you guys. You don't want to be that guy. You're not that guy. Patrick. That's not you. <laughs> you're not that guy, pal. I love Izzy Miyake. <laughs> anyway. Um, got to ask you this though, as someone that, you know, we're, we're pretty ignorant to, I think the ways, uh, or what's happening down under, what are the biggest differences in the Australian menswear landscape compared to what's happening in the American menswear scene? Well, like with all due respect to Australia, I, lo- I love Australia. There, there isn't really a scene mm. much there. Like, there's a couple of uh, people doing some interesting things down there, but there's no scene. It's tiny, right? 
So um, the difference is there is no <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I suppose. But, I mean, in terms of the people that are doing stuff, that it's interesting down there, I suppose it's it, – it's prob- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> how well, how bad is the sound of Uggs on a footpath? Like I can't handle that. Oh, you really? It's like, oh. fuck, they're, they're indoor shoes. When did people start wearing them outside? Oh, really? They're not like beach shoes? They're Ugg boots, man. They're, they're wearing <laughs> inside. But they're so like, cozy, like a winter though. winter flip-flop. But, um, <laughs> but I think, you know, it, it's sort of gone – it's a little bit more casual. Mm. Like we're sort of an anomaly. It's definitely a little bit more casual, definitely more coastal orientated. We all live around the beach pretty much. Apart from those poor people who live in the inside in Australia mm-hmm. where it's 45 degrees. But, yeah, a little, a little bit more casual, slightly brighter in the colour palette on mm. the whole um, and slightly more active in, in its orientation. We're pretty active, you know, in, yeah. in what we're doing. But um, there just isn't much of a scene there. We're a nation of 23 million people, I think, and most of the influence comes from either here or from Europe. Do you get a lot of influence from like Asia since you're – Yeah, hey, right there. Yeah, like, right? We get we – get, um, I mean – you know, from Japan, it's huge for me. It always has been more through the Americana thing in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we buy a lot of fabric from Japan and get a lot of things made in Japan as well. Um, we get influence. I don't really get influence from China much. Um, Is there a Korean customer base pop? Little bit. Pop I mean, percolate? it's more sort of there. We've got a big Indonesian customer okay. base. Um, we go to Jakarta quite a lot, and I love the. It's just like Indos are just the nicest people, and yeah. like so lovely to deal with. They're really cool. It sort of resonates with the Australian way of life because they're kind of quite relaxed and mm-hmm. quite casual, and they want like soft and stuff like that. So, a little bit that. Um, and I've kind of gone into it, and I love all their batik and everything. But like, I can't go and use it because then I'll be accused of being cultural appropriating, which I would be. Yeah. But for sure, but <laughs> I love that. So yeah, there definitely is, and you get that, and that's coming closer now. Like we're in Asia and Australia, right? right? So that, that's coming a lot closer now, which is really exciting. Um, but it's mostly from from Euro, Europe and the US where you get the influence. Does a brand have to break out of Australia and find an international audience to kind of be a viable business? No, I mean, we've got a few people there, not not heaps, but I think it depends on the brand. Like we haven't had that many brands that have broken out. We've had Zimmerman who, okay. have, who, who have really broken out um, of Australia in terms of in a real way. I'm talking like actually in, in – and in, in in sort of proper luxury, um, if that's even a, if even a category anymore. But <laughs> we, we said Uggs already. What's that? We said Uggs already. Well, I've used my Ugg card. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. He pulled his Ugg uh, card. We kind of had that, but we and we've got some like brands like RM Williams, which I grew up wearing. RM Williams, classic, from a farm, classic but footwear. It's like a different thing. That was like workwear growing up, right? And, and that's what you that's what you actually wore. That's what I wore every day. Like gr- growing it, up, yeah. there's a bug oh, on the farm. Guys- I did. You Does know, it bug you out seeing guys wear that like on the streets of New York? Like I like it, man. Yeah. It's nice. Like it's a good product. It's yeah. Really, it's really it's really good. So it just isn't a lot. That's it. But like to answer your question, do you have to break out? I don't know. Like, listen, I opened in New York nine and a half years ago. Um, and the reason is like I want to dress guys in New York. Like we started doing some trunk shows here, and I was like, How exciting is this? Like right. to dress a client in New York, and it's something New York's been that city you look to growing up. You're like, you know. I love Empire State of Mind. It's a great song, right? <laughs> okay. But you look at that. You look at that growing up, and you're like, "Wow, New York!" And like, imagine if I could do something there. It'd be incredible to dress people there. So that's why we came overseas. It wasn't really like a coldly thought out business plan. We're just chasing like a dream. I do just chasing the dream. The somewhat but, dream tomato, and, baby. Yeah. yeah, but it's like it's great, and we've taken time. It's nine and a half years in, but we're not opening fifty stores here. Right. We're just trying to we're just trying to do our thing there. So. Right. I don't know, man. Maybe people feel like if you've got private equity investment and you need to pump and dump, maybe you do. But sure. like for us, we're just like live slow, die old, you know? Yeah. All right, well, let me ask you a question about Australian style. Uh, what the fuck is up with the mullets? <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, okay, so AFL, our football, yeah. you know, your, your foot is called AFL, Australian right. football. It's totally different to every other football. With the punting and the fucking bopping and it's the- greatest, like, yeah. It's the greatest sport on earth. Easy. Okay. okay. Easy. <laughs> and the grand final is on this weekend. <laughs> Come playing? on the Swans. But, come, on, come on, the swans. But um, not even my club. My club sucks. But no. um, anyway, but they, like AFL players started getting the mullet. So whatever AFL players do, every young guy does. My, my little nephew's got this mullet. I'm like, man, <laughs> what are you doing? You're like an idiot. But that's the thing. And it's just petering off now after okay. four or five years. Oh, wow. Okay. Just chilling out. Like it's always been a thing in Australia, the mullet, like for like mad bogans, right? <laughs> like that's been the thing. Like always had mullets. Like. And then the AFL players do things like they they get onto it. So hopefully it's going to go because it is definitely the world's ugliest haircut. <laughs> 
And why would the <laughs> AFL players doing it? Because I always thought it was like this like uh, party animal, yeah. like 80s thing. But it was I think it's just, a cry for help. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a fucking cry for help. Well, you guys are known for getting reckless, right? I think it's fair to say. What's a yeah. typical Aussie night out with the boys? Oh, I mean, now or earlier? Then for me now, it's not that not that exciting. But earlier, let's say earlier in your prime. Yeah, in my prime. <laughs> My kids are going to listen to this. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, not I mean, Patrick Dodgers, for uh, Jatrick Ponson. <laughs> Ratrick yeah. Thompson. Yeah. For John <laughs> Patrickson. No, um, dr- don't do drugs. But I, <laughs> I think, yeah, we've got that. We've got that. Co- you know, when you come to Sydney, you've, have you been to Australia? He's been. To Melbourne. Oh, bad luck. Um, <laughs> just kidding for everyone in Melbourne. I love Melbourne. I don't want to do that. But if you come to Sydney, like most of the old pubs, they're tiled inside. Okay. Right? That's so they hose them out. <laughs> oh, God. At the end. I'm not joking. Hose, hose that shit down at the end of the night. Out, like because yeah. of all the blood and all the vomit and all the fights and stuff. So, I mean, it's not necessarily like that anymore. It's, just, it's sort of gentrified in Sydney because the property prices have gone up. Right. So, but um, but that's it. Like Australians, we're, they're a rowdy bunch, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Love it's in your blood. It's in our blood. Yeah, 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 for sure. Is it a thing where you like, uh, like the rugby team or the AFL team hits a bar and they're like, we're going to drink it dry. We're not leaving until they're out of alcohol. Yeah, I think, I mean, in the country, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, you that's drink absurd. it dry. Yeah, I mean, it's not, not a great life choice. But, you know, <laughs> but now we have pokies, you know, pokies, like What's slot poke? machines oh. Oh. in every pub. So they, they get distracted and they oh. just go spend all their money on <laughs> punching darts and <laughs> playing <laughs> slots. Legends. <laughs> But you know, whatever. Fosters, you guys drink that or not? Nah? No yeah. one in Australia drinks Fosters. No right, drinks it, Fosters, it right? sucks. It's That's an Americanization. What do you like, drink, Victoria? Uh like no, no one really. I mean, a little bit, but like Forex mid strength is like what a lot of guys drink. Like what? Port, Port Alex, Forex. It's from Queensland. Okay, okay. It's a mid strength beer. Um, but like, there's all these craft beers now, which just give me the shits. Okay, <laughs> literally, yeah, <laughs> a lot of yeast. But um, but there's all these craft beers. But that's good. We got some really good small breweries in Australia. But like, yeah, depends where you're from. Like, if you're from Melbourne, you drink VB. If you're from Sydney, you kind of would drink Reshes. If you're from Queensland, you drink Forex. If you're from South Australia, you smoke Crystal Meth. <laughs> Um, if you're from WA, you drink. Sw- I'm just kidding to my Adelaide. I know you don't all smoke crystal meth, but no one's drinking Foster's. To be clear, it is not actually Australian for beer, as the commercials. Used I don't to even know if you can buy it in Australia, man. Like, really? Oh, you can, but like I think they sell it at like tourist bars. Like, okay, uh, sure. I've, I've never yeah. had a Foster's. In my it is life. absolute garbage. It's like trying to get well, compound chicken. I wouldn't in even China. know. I've never had yeah, one. No, it's it's just, I'm telling I think you, like Crocodile Dundee came <laughs> out and he was drinking a Foster's or something. I don't know. It was a genius stroke. Yeah, right. But, yeah. Well, they're also typically. Like in like mini kegs shaped cans. Yeah, the big old boys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> absolute fucking happy to clear that up. Absolute lies. Yeah, Can you teach us some of your favorite Australian slang? It's favorite slang. <laughs> we've we've covered sick cunt. Yeah. We got both. I mean, sick cunt I think is universal, right? But it means no, not here. <laughs> no. The C word in Australia is still like you, you yeah. say it. Did I say unless C-word? you unless yeah. you proceed by a sick. Sorry, mom. Um sick cunt. I think like you know, we're not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> what is that? What is, go off. You no, know, let's do it. We're oh. not here to fuck spiders. What right. Doing? We're not here to mess around. You know, it's the same with like, you know, I often say, and our guys, are American guys, like, what are you doing? Let's fuck this puppy. <laughs> you know, like. Okay. So you don't fuck on, the spiders. We're trying to leave the house. I don't say it to my kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We're not here let's, to let's fuck. fuck. Let's fuck this puppy. No, it's different. Means like, we're not let's here do to it. fuck spiders. It's like, let's sort this out. This is like, oh, come okay. on. We're yeah. not here to fuck. So let's get in. And often we'll be around <laughs> drinking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> let's fuck this puppy means let's go. Let's get going. Let's go. <laughs> okay. yeah. It's a slight, it's a slight difference, but it's yeah. a, one's a, yeah, one's a sober. I don't know. A, a lot few. of animals down there. And I guess bestiality. Yeah. Well, I was going to say a lot yeah, of bestiality yeah, yeah. involved. <laughs> but I had like, I went, I went with these, uh, with this Dutch mate. We're in Chicago. We went to the big Nike store and I've been, let's fucking this puppy. And we're not here to fuck spiders for a while. And he was trying, because he wanted Australian slang. And we're in the middle of the Nike store and he's like, Patrick. I was like, yeah, Dirk. And he goes, let's go fuck some puppies. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know this guy. No, Dirk. <laughs> Not here, pal. <laughs> no one's fucking a dog. Context, Dirk. <laughs> Context. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you're here in New York now. While you're here, besides the Belgian store, what are some shops that you definitely need to hit up while you're here? Well, uh, yeah, I'd always go to the mansion for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, because just to check it out and, you know. Um, I'll go check out the Rose store. It's always pretty interesting just if for nothing apart from the furniture and the right. artwork. What do you think right. of their menswear? Yeah, it's really good. I think it's really well executed. It's not um, – I mean, they always use really good fabrication, those guys. So it's got beauty just 
you know, innately. You're a sucker um, for aesthetics, aesthetic beauty. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm superficial, so. you might say. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. That's one way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, 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 they, they, they do a good job. They think about it and they don't overcomplicate it. It's quite natural for them. I'll go check that out. I love that. What's that store, Tyler? I love the Indian wedding store. Uh, Sabasachi. Have you been down there? No. Where's you that? You haven't been there? Where's that? The oh, Indian in wedding store? No, it's not. They, they, they wouldn't love me calling it the Indian wedding store. I think it's a bit more than that, but it is incredible okay. store. Just just walk in the just have a look in the store. It's like phenomenal. The design, everything. It feels like the Maharaja of Maharaja of Mysore's palace, like wow. back in the day, but okay. dark. Like an Abercrombie store back in the day. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. With the spray and everything. Yeah, yeah. So that's really, really good. Um, where else shall I go? Yeah, I mean that's I mean, I'll go to a couple of vintage, but that that's pretty much it. I don't have I'm only here for three days. I right. don't have mm. heaps of time and uh there's a pizza. spot you said we should check out, yeah? No? I don't know. Maybe that <laughs> wife store. What's it called? A wife. Wife. Yeah, right yeah, down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right but around the James corner. James Harvey Kelly. I was just with my mate. He's a photographer. He said, "Yeah, definitely." Shout out Peter check, and Mike. Yeah, check that out. He said that's great. Colbo's um, like three doors down. Check that out. Yeah, yeah. I check that out too. So yeah, those kind of they're kind of like whatever. just pop ins. See what's yeah, going there's on. There's a new yeah. store in Brooklyn, Moldy Brand, but I don't know if I'd be bothered going all the way over there. But that seemed that seemed interesting. Is then, that in space? Then I don't know. Uh, is it okay? Or is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, for sure. Definitely yeah, worth it. I'll go yeah. check that out. And that's it. Okay. Mm. What about food? Do you like restaurants and shit that you need to hit up? Yeah, I mean, like, I love the grill. I mean, I know that's like <laughs> Dude, an obvious I mean, thing. Who does like, it? For obvious. me, I sit there and I feel like a young Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. like, my, I mean, you feel it's so powerful. In your powder in blue there. suit. Like, yeah. Exactly. And he's got and the he's hair for it now, too. And he, I do. I mean, I should send it to my guy. But, um, but, I think no one execute. They're the best restaurateurs in the sort of multi-chain restaurant. In Talk about major food group. 100%. Like, no one beats them. I, I've not seen anyone that beats those guys. You go in, the quality standard's incredible. It's like theater is exactly mm-hmm. what restaurants should be. I'm not often there for the food. Like you go for the food, right? But you And the you, spectacle. Yeah, the vibes. You're there for the spectacle. And I love it there. I, I love what they do. So I'll go check that out. Where Carbone? Are you, have you been to Carbone here? Yeah, Carbone's great. I love it. It's a bit heavy for me jumping <laughs> yeah. on the plane, but it's usually my <laughs> last meal. I slide mm. in. And then you get a little takeaway for the plane. Okay. Oh. Everyone loves you when you open that off on the plane. Yeah, so spicy <laughs> Tony spicy. in a doggy bag, dude. Bang. But that's good. But I'm more, I'm more a grill guy. Um, and where else will I go and check? I was so sad that the Hampton Chuckney Co. closed. You know, I love that. I love that thing. You, you never go there? Do you ever well, go I mean, there? when I worked in Soho, yeah. That was great. I, you know, I found myself in India about 10 years ago, so it reminds me of it, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, where else do I go? I mean, I go to Baltazar every morning for breakfast. When okay. I'm there, um, just to be in that room. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's it's a great place. Read Catch all the a papers. vibe. And they always give you a You're a vibes guy. Which I'm like, it's first thing in the morning. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I like I like the big rooms and the yeah. atmosphere places. I said, very, New, very New York places. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I, yeah. I, like, I like the touristy places. No, not I'm not saying touristy. I'm saying like they're very they're yeah. like New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Old New York. 100%. Where yeah. else should I go while I'm here? Depends oh, what you right. want, dude. Yeah. Where's your spot? I mean, where there's are a we? Fucking, there's a falafel place around the corner. <laughs> there's a fucking burger spot down there. Yeah, you so want where's like, your number one well, restaurant the, what, spot? Number one restaurant in yeah, the whole you, city. Like if you okay, if you guys if you guys are going out on a romantic date. I mean, the grill's definitely up there. I mean, that's that's why I went on my like, anniversary. Like, like you go to the grill. Date, yeah, big date. Night. It's a good anniversary. Oh, spot, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's the only time I'm going. Yeah, yeah. Ultra oh, Paradiso. Bro. Yeah, Ultra. Ultra was really good. We did a dinner there last time. I mean, they can they can cook there. Absolutely. Yeah, the produce is really good. The standard there is amazing, actually. Ignacio, shout out Ignacio. Yeah. Mm. When you do travel, and it sounds like you're on the road quite often, what's like the strangest or maybe most unexpected thing you pack? I mean, this time would be the gift I bought for you guys. <laughs> the which the is kangaroo, kangaroo balls? Yeah, it's like kangaroo testicles, them? I think. <laughs> I was like going through customs in Tokyo and I was and I, in my carry-on, I was like, this would could be quite awkward. <laughs> yeah. Because I've got a I've got I've got a couple of pairs of kangaroo testicles. They're like, what is a podcast? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now kangaroo <laughs> testicles are the weirdest. Are thing they I've like done. lucky like a rabbit's foot? Like what is the point or is it just a novelty? No, you'll find out. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Good to that felt very ominous. downhill from here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what uh besides PJ, you know, we we talked about kind of like the jewelry I think is maybe the only thing you're wearing that's and the panties that are a unspecified brand. What brands do you wear the most besides your own? And we talked about vintage Arnie's yeah, yeah, and vintage yeah. Armani. I don't wear any of that stuff though. I just like you just, just reference, just collect it. Yeah. 
It's like not uh, even in your size necessarily. You just like, what's want, that? No, it, I didn't care about the size. Do you collect but. them for reference pieces or for like to build like an archive? As no, a reference historian? pieces. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I collect them for reference, but then you build an archive because you kind of start, you know, I'm slightly obsessive by nature. So, Is it at, at the house or do you have like a- No, no, I've got like a, in, in our design studio, I've got mm. an archive section and gotcha. it's, it's getting a, a bit silly, <laughs> but it's fun. It's like, that's fun, man. Like you should do that. That's the good stuff. What else do I wear? Um, did you buy any new clothing from any brands that you know, I play a lot of tennis? So okay. like I wear like a tennis, t- 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 but it's like I'm lost now. Well, you guys let have tennis ask, stuff, right? This. Besides, yeah, we do tennis, tennis stuff, but I do like experiment with a lot of different every season. Wilson just did a really good thing, uh, what they did and, and stuff like that. I buy a lot of Land's End, okay? Right, oh yeah, the socks. <laughs> I buy what do you Land's End, which I really like when you're playing? No, I just buy Land's End for like all my bits. No, but I want to ask, uh, what do you what do you put what do you wear when you're playing tennis besides PJ? Tennis. Yeah, I mean, I wear Wilson mainly. The plainest okay. stuff I can find usually. Okay. I bought the most incredible pair of glasses in uh, in Tokyo, which are like wrap around mm. tennis. They're the full speed dealers, but like <laughs> serious. Like <laughs> yeah, go them. Um, I buy a lot of eyewear, like a, a lot. I mean, we make eyewear, so I usually wear the stuff we make. But I buy a lot of vintage eyewear. Um, yeah, in terms of clothing, I, I actually mostly wear what we're doing because. Either I'm wearing stuff because I like I'm designing stuff and I'm like I really want that, or I'm trying something new that we've done and right. I'm like I'm wear testing it and wear test it hard yeah. to make sure the fabric's right or we we we, we, we did it in the right way. So that's kind of apart from like sportswear, that's what I'll kind of wear. And then when I exercise, I just you let know. me see how this performs at the pokies. Yeah, <laughs> let's see how we go. How's the elbow going? Yeah, yeah on the are, are you like are you would you consider yourself like the face of your brand? Like like when you're like I need to be in head to toe, I need to be wearing the glasses. Not like, like it's not. Yeah, I mean it's more. Yeah, probably. I suppose I need to dress in it, but it's not like a hundred percent need. I'm not that active. Do you relish that role or is that like kind of against your, cause you seem like a very affable, you know, out there guy, yeah, a great mean, personal I style. It, it's part of Handsome. it, but we have, we have a good crew. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I'll tell you the grill tonight. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Um, His kangaroo nuts are tingling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch it when they vibrate. Um, you know, we've got a, a, a bit of a crew like mm-hmm. at work and a few of us kind of do it, but I'd be the main one for sure. Um, yeah, it's like, it's not a role like instantly you relish in the beginning. It's just part of your job, part of what you do. And I mean, it's the brand is an extension of me. In, 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 it's your in, name in, on the label. Way. Yeah, but it's an extension of me. It's an extension of my taste and what I find. And it's the kind of business I wanted to build when we started it. Like we're a really interesting business because a big part of our employees, they're actually owners of the business as well. I put mm. a chunk of the business aside and we got... Ten partners now. Oh Tyler, wow, Tyler! I think in total Eesh. we just Dante just make word up Dante Dante. Who's, there you go. Uh, I said your name, <laughs> my boy Dante Laverde. He just was latest partner. So who's the we, most annoying partner? Me. <laughs> me. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone will attest to it being <laughs> me. How are you annoying? Are you like too uh, scrupulous, too micromanagey, too no, perfectionist? I don't, I don't, maybe ask Tyler. I don't know. Maybe I think I'm. I don't know. Tower, tell us why you don't like your boss. I, yeah. <laughs> I would find me the most annoying, I think, out of everyone. I don't know. I'm just high. I'm very high energy. Mm. So I go pretty quick. Is that it, Tyler? Is that the one I'm annoying? He's the best. He's yeah, the best, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the best, baby. Also, apparently a psycho. So, <laughs> uh, who's the most? None of them are annoying. They're amazing. That's why they're partners. <laughs> like, we kind of like to become a partner in our business, you're going to be there for a while, but it's also like the people that you want to spend the rest of your working life with, True, you want to right. hang out with. Um, and that's changing as we do women's as well. Not ha- not changing that we want to hang out with them, but it's the whole nature of it's changing, uh, which is really exciting. But no man, they're all the best. Like we we have a partners retreat in coming. We coming down in a month. Oh, in a month. Where's that we, at? We do that. We're you guys doing live- secret location. Okay. You guys okay. need some live wow. entertainment. No, I'm just kidding. Some- <laughs> you need some live entertainment. Yeah, lo- I love that. We're love bookable that. for sure. Got? What are your talents? Uh, uh, fireside pod, chats podcast. For a lot fires, of money. I you yeah. say fire juggling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tickling um, kangaroo balls. There is going to be a fire actually and there'll be kangaroos. But okay. we do them once a year and they're like some of my, my favorite like four or five days of the year because mm. they're just a, a good bunch of people yeah. um, to hang out with and they're, they're great. So yeah, I mean, back to your question. Yeah, I mean, it is an extension of me, the brand. It didn't start that way. You know, when I first started the brand, I actually called it Suit Shop. Which is a fucking did, awful name. Terrible SEO, dude. But just how did that an awful name. I, I didn't think the internet existed then. Okay. I mean, Suit Instagram shop? didn't exist. Yeah. But like, the idea was I wanted, to, I think I've been reading too much Kenya Hara and I wanted to be like an empty vessel or some shit. But, <laughs> and then after a while, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And and and, and, and we changed the name to P. Johnson. But, um, but yeah, it's an extension of me. And the idea is, you know, that's how I kind of think, think, you know, beauty kind of should be represented in clothing and all that stuff. 
Was there ever a moment in the early days of the brand where whether it was like one big mistake or I don't know, just any decision that nearly sunk the whole ship? Not nearly sunk it, but I, we, I make bad decisions nearly every day. <laughs> you know, it's um, part of your we're, process. We're always we've always been a brand. We haven't like tried to go too. Actually, no, not sunk the whole ship. But in one year, we opened in New York. We started our own factory, which was crazy thing to do right. in, in, in New York, Italy, in Italy, in Italy yeah, yeah. Uh, and we opened in London just after that. And we were wholesaling, which I'm an awful wholesaler. <laughs> we're in all the Barneys on <laughs> we're on Netaporter matches and all that stuff. And we were doing a lot. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, and my wife was just a bit like, mate, you need to just. <laughs> chill <laughs> relax sleeping, sleeping like two hours a night you just need to relax so i think i probably would have put myself into an early grave if i kept that going and then worked out okay this is how to keep it sustainable and slow down a little bit and just keep keep this thing moving in a, in, in a good way how, yeah. how important is wholesale to your business in 2024 zero we don't yeah any, yeah yeah we don't we we actually we had a nice wholesale business i'd say i'm not that great at it but we had a good business but we decided when, when did we stop wholesale, Tyler, eight years ago, seven years ago? Oh, okay. We decided that we've got this, you know, one of our goals as a business is to be as waste-free as possible. We're not waste-free uh, by any means, you know. Nobody is. clothing is wasteful, but wholesale was a very hard way to get that there. So we pulled out of that for that reason. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's made our life a bit easier. Sure. Yeah. yeah. How's, uh, how's women's coming along? And when did you guys launch that? Yeah, we launched women's about two years ago, I think, just after COVID. We launched slightly pre and we stopped and then launched afterwards. Um, man, the women's is – it's interesting. How is the P. Johnsonette different from the P. Johnson? Or is it kind of just everything's unisex? I don't know. How does it work? No, it's not unisex. Like, it, it's definitely – it's a totally different collection. Like, you know, menswear is quite natural for me to design because you're right. designing clothes for yourself essentially right. and, and, and different versions of your, of yourself. And But women's wear is like – starting from scratch it's really challenging um and i've really enjoyed the the challenge of it it's it's great but we're so early on in that in, in that thing and the collections are they're really good and they're getting strong but what we can achieve in that i'm really excited for it because the scope's so much wider in sure. women's really and 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 we're sort of learning that at the moment but yeah, yeah. It's, it's good is the like bigger plan to like basically build like a lifestyle brand so it's like i dress the guy then i'm going to address the woman and then it's like is it then into like everything else that touches their life is that too grandiose and ambitious like i don't know if that's where it will end up we just sort of go one day at a time in that respect i mean in a way it's sort of it becomes a little bit that just as you know we have a furniture business or we have a, my wife has a furniture business antique furniture business which i sort of do the buying with her of all the antiques mm -hmm. and so we got a big touch into that kind of world and in interiors as well um which is really exciting but that's a separate thing but we have our sort of aesthetic language in that um, which is great. I don't know if it's to turn into a full life. I mean, does the world need a lifestyle business? I don't know. I don't know. You, you, don't don't be, you don't want to be the next Kith? Yeah. <laughs> or the, and then have Mr. Armani come knocking? <laughs> if he's alive by, by then. the time, I'm the next Kith, <laughs> Mr. Armani. It's not what it'll be knocking. Armani Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Old AJ. Um, I don't know. To answer your question, I have no idea. Right. Like, we just kind of go one foot in front of the other and, and just try and improve on what we've done. Like, the last season, like at the end of every season, we look at the collection and I kind of go through my like remunerate like things and like, you know, this is shit. I hate it. <laughs> this is awful. We should do this every season and try and improve. And then we kind of grow and do a few more things. We're not like hungry to do too much. And I've learned that the hard way. Right. As I said, just just do one thing at a time and do it really well if you can. And and take your time in learning. Like you look at all the great brands, the the really great brands, they're, they're old, man. Yeah. Like they're like, and and some of them are you know no longer doing great things, but <laughs> in their prime, they they took time to get there. Mostly, they didn't they didn't rush it too much. And I come from a world where brands are hundreds of years old, right? In, in tailoring, and 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 we're we're like we're 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 a minute old, you know. Mm. So try Babies. and slow down. Well, yeah, try and slow down and, and and do that and do it in the right way. And like when we're trying to learn a new product line, like. When we started eyewear, like we went into that, like and did a lot of research, and we found who's the best person we think that knows all about this, and the best workshop up in up in northern Italy. Who who does the best acetate, um, which is Masakelli, by the way, they're incredible, <laughs> and they're up there as well. Who does the best lenses? And that's Barberini, and they they make glass lenses still, and there's no one that uses it. I mean, Tom Brown does in one of his Japanese lines, but no one uses them anymore. Okay, and where's it? and we like looked into that. Okay, cool. Can we offer this at value to our clients? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. And that's how we approach every process and it's not okay you can't have everything 100% cashmere and all that stuff is it the best I don't know whatever but we try and put the best ingredients into what we're doing so we can we can have pretty good outcomes 
And if you're running fast and trying to do everything, like, I don't know, man. I don't get these brands that, like, they started overnight and now they're $300 million. Yeah. You're like, oh, man, that makes me so anxious. Mm. And, I've got, money? and I've got other things going on in my life too, man. Like yep. Raising a family. Yeah, that, but whatever. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Rooting for the swans. Yeah, you know, but no, not the crows. crows oh, the crows. The crows. Sorry. Uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> All uh, birds. No one wants to talk about that. But, you know, we've got other stuff going on. You know, yeah. this, this is one of the things that is right. important in my life and I love clothing, but there, there's lots of other passions and stuff that, yeah. that, that, that we all do. Well, Lawrence and I, I want to, I want to do the listeners at home at service be, yeah. as a service because Lawrence and I, I think we get, a uh, as the, as the fashion guys in our like personal homey circles, we get hit up all the fucking time with advice on dress codes, right? So I want to throw some dress code scenarios at you and you tell us what the fit should be. That's all right. Go first up garden party. If someone says that the dress code is garden party, what should the fit be? Yeah, I think garden party is is probably you're not wearing a tie, obviously, mm. unless you're like unless it's that kind of garden party. But you're not wearing a tie. Uh, open neck that- shirt. You could have a collar on your shirt unless okay. you can pull it off, and you can wear like a beautiful little mal collar or mm. something like that. Or if you're doing knitwear, it's going to be really elegant. Okay. So that's not an excuse just to go and wear a shitty t-shirt. <laughs> okay. okay? <laughs> Don't be looking for excuses. Wear a jacket. Okay. It's a party. These people that have put the party on have gone to the effort of making a nice party. Hopefully, there's nice drinks there, nice food. Wear a jacket, wear trousers. They can be matching if you want as a suit. But if it's a suit, like don't wear a wool work suit. Like okay. chill it out a bit into like a cotton or wear separates. Okay. Keep the colors lighter. Depends on the time of year. Okay. I mean, who's having a garden party in winter? Sickos. Uh, I don't know. The Australians, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But you also like your shoes, right? Like don't wear a pair of lace ups or something like that. Uh, wear, wear, wear something a little bit more chilled. All right. Okay. I like it. This one near and dear to your heart, I'm sure. What about beach chic? Beach. I mean, we're swimmers at the beach. Don't be a weirdo. Like, that's okay. all you wear. <laughs> like, don't get dressed up to go to the beach. Really? What about like a beach wedding? Yeah. Oh, a beach wedding. Yeah. Beach thought, chic. I thought, you're dre- going, I thought you say I'm going to the beach. No, to no. Up. Beach like, chic. You need to just actually pack your swimmers. Oh, beach <laughs> wedding. Oh, beach chic wedding. Soz. Yeah. Um, beach chic. Wow. All right. You don't have to wear a jacket because I'm assuming it's quite warm. Mm. Okay. Right. If you're wearing a shirt though, that thing better be ironed and crisp mm. and looking amazing okay. like your best shirt incredible if it's into the evening wear a white shirt okay like you know that's nice manners just wear, wear a white shirt into the evening or if you if you got the blue eyes you can wear a cornflower <laughs> that's it <laughs> you're not wearing a normal thing don't wear stripes on the beach you're not a deck really? chair no you're oh, not okay. going to the office you're you're not not a deck chair. you know come on just chill and no denim obviously okay for any of these events not right just, no no white jeans be chic no way right You've got rules about white jeans in Australia, but is it ever nice to wear jeans on a beach? Don't you want the breeze going through you? I mean, at night maybe. I don't know. You could. I think if you get the right cut of white jean, you can do it. And if if you've got, yeah, you could. You okay. could. What right. about but not white and white. It's not right, right. What about shit? I think P Diddy's ruined the white party. I think they would establish that. What shoes do you wear to a beach chic wedding? I mean, you take your shoes off when you're on the beach. Oh, okay. All right. I think just roll your. We we got married on the beach, my wife and I, and everyone took their shoes off. And yeah, How polite. But, you know, where I suppose you want something, it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah. you wear a loafer, you get sand in your loafer. Yeah. That's why you we're asking you. Something you could take off easily. No okay. laces. Right. I didn't hear any linen mentioned, but. Well, you can wear linen if you want, but like it's an up event. I think. Yeah. Linen is nice on there. Like I find. Well, Chris White linen shirts. Okay. Quite beautiful. Yeah. All right. All right. What about a cocktail casual? See that's 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 like an oxymoron. This is this is what confuses a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Cocktail casual. Cocktail casual confuses a lot of people and is definitely a common because it's dress really code. confusing. <laughs> yeah, I just say, is it cocktail or, or casual? Yeah. Cocktail casual. I guess someone wants someone to wear a shirt but not a jacket. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Cocktail casual. That yeah. sounds to me like a jacket and a shirt, but maybe not the neckwear. So similar. No, it's, to- it's no. It's it's like a shirt and then a nice pair of trousers. Okay. But I don't think denim. But it's a stupid dress code. <laughs> what about like a like a suit in like a kind of a, a non you know a, a rare color or like a not common color like not navy or gray or black or or yeah blue. definitely for that I think you can I mean depending on the time of day if it's daylight saving you know if you're getting later at night you can wear something lighter how good your tan is and all that stuff but I think with this stuff like. These are American uh, wedding themes, dude. I'm telling her okay, dress codes. I'm, I'm yeah, telling I'm, you. I'm, I've never heard cocktail casual. I think, you know, do you know what's a good one? I always find that I always encourage people to use this. Like do a, a theme like that that is a bit confusing. So people ask like summer best. 
Who knows what that what is? is? What is that? Just the Who best knows? shit that you ask. You yeah. okay. <laughs> 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 prescription. You go tie shirt, but yeah, cocktail casual. That's confusing, but yeah. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Last one. This should be probably the most fun. Creative black tie. Creative black tie. Yeah. Okay. I think that's how a, crazy do we get? As the, as the the Brits would say, with a bit of fun, <laughs> <laughs> a twist of color. Uh, creative black tie. That could go anywhere, couldn't it? Go as Count Dracula. Yeah, mm, if you, <laughs> you might get kicked out, yeah. dude. Cowboy, cowboy black tie. I mean, that's like good. little Ralph Lauren style. That's a good. That's a good shit. Yeah, but not with the sneakers. I mean, I know he has to wear them. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but yeah, I think that could go in so many ways. That's a good dress code. Creative black tie. I like that. That doesn't mean go overboard with the color. If you're a guest at a wedding and you're not the groom, just just chill on the color a little okay. bit. But like, yeah, you can go anywhere with that. That's what, would fun. You, what would you do? What would I do? You, I, I think it's bad form to wear a white jacket unless you're the host, so that takes white out of mm. it. I'd probably bring a bit of western into there because okay. I quite like that. Depending if it's a winter, if it's a winter mode, if not, I'd probably go all silk. Yeah, Ooh. one color, all black silk, Ooh, like that. light silk. Yeah, fancy really jammies. Light. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My peach. Yeah, PJs. And a bit, of, a bit, of, a few slippers. I bought a pair of those Charve slippers. They're Sorry, so I'm good. in pajamas, but my name is PJ. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and slip those on and wear that. Yeah. All right. Well, fucking, you're welcome, everybody. Um, PJ, as someone that is like a goddamn historian of this shit, who's on your? Are you familiar with the what Mount Rushmore is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Four top picks unranked who's on your mount rushmore of style icons oof oof style icon well i'll put armani in there just from yep. he's always been my design icon let's do that you'd have to so he's a good italian in there um you know what i'm gonna put an american thank you're pa- you because you're pandering it's hard man no not because i'm pandering <laughs> just because like because i put ralph but as a i mean ralph's a different thing i love ralph so yeah i'm gonna put halston in there okay yeah, just because of that moment in time. Yeah. So he was going through. Yeah. Was the most exciting time. I think you guys call that post Coke pre age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, unfortunately, got the. Yeah, they teach that in social studies. As well, but <laughs> he was a little just, too late. Just very it was incredible. So, style, his apartment, everything. Okay. I chuck him in there. Um, so, you have an Italian and an American. I got an Italian and American. It sounds like a joke. Uh, let's <laughs> put a song from Japan in. I'll get Izzy Miyaki. Okay. Uh, He's incredible, um, and they don't always have to be designers, I guess. Let's <laughs> God, I couldn't think of it. Yeah, name. there's been no movie stars, no athletes, no musicians. Well, like all the ones I like tend to have been cancelled now. Like, so I'm like, I'm worried. <laughs> like I'd say Errol Flynn, you probably won't know who he is, but I mean, he he was a slave trader. Oh Jesus and, Christ! And, Wait, and, what? And, I thought he was. Oh, fuck, he could dress. I thought he was just in the closet. Yeah. No, no, no. He was. He was so fun. No, he wasn't. He 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 he, he just like young girls. Oh, okay. Um, not a good bloke. Uh, Aristotle Nass is also not the best yeah, bloke, but okay. I mean the way he dressed was incredible, right? Like his eyewear alone was amazing. But did you ever see the Christina O? His boat he named after his daughter. No. Uh, the seats you can you can rent it. I mean for a lot. It's still existing <laughs> and it's been refurbed. It's an amazing boat. The seats in the bar are made out of whale's foreskin. And you guys are <laughs> going to think I've got a thing <laughs> after the kangaroo testicles? I get that. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're actually like a whale's foreskin. They're the seats. Incredible. Wow. But anyway, <laughs> apart from his sort of compensating, he um, he's an incredible dresser. So, and in that moment too, okay. in, in that right. moment in time. So we got a Greek on here then. Yeah, why not? Well, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> well, who's on your Mount Rushmore of sick cons? <laughs> Well, let's do some people that cancel then. If yeah, sure. Uh, Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's, he's the best. Have you seen uh, his cooking show, Bon Appetit? Um, no. So it's just him and he brings, because he's got two Michelin star chef, uh, chefs, uh, restaurants in, in Paris that he owns. He brings one of his chefs and he talks down. It's amazing. He just goes and eats himself into oblivion. Yeah. And we're like 16 dozen oysters <laughs> and then he's just farting and burping his way through it. So that's just to show us him being disgusting. Yeah, he's, he's super bright and really, he's amazing. His knowledge of history is really good. His knowledge of cooking is really good. And he's Gerard Depardieu. He's incredible, but right. a bit right. So he's up there. <laughs> bit right. Bit right. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So it was there. a different time. Other yeah. sick cunts. Uh, <laughs> let's go on this count. So James Brown. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> How good yeah. was he? Did you ever see him and Pavarotti on the stage doing Man's World? No. no. Oh, look it up. It's incredible. That's a, that sounds like a YouTube video for the afters. <laughs> it's amazing. And just he's, yeah. he's the best, but <laughs> did lock a woman in a room for three days to get a blowjob, which is a bit <laughs> bit much. Uh, he's good. Who else is there? Errol Flynn. I'll put him on there. Okay. Right. Bring him back, Errol. An incredible dresser. Yeah. Amazing. Again, was a slave trader. 
uh, if you've read, read his book, My Wicked Wicked Ways, he good um, title. <laughs> he, he was actually quite yeah. wicked, but delivers on dress. what it promises. Yeah. yeah, but he could dress so well. You got four around Mount Rushmore. Yeah, you got one more yeah. terrible uh, person. You have a slave trader, person. a <laughs> sex trafficker. A- do I have to order terrible people? No, no, you, no, no. you set it up that way. Okay, dude. no, no. I've, I've gone down this path. We I thought like a, it's although, a dark, lonely By the way, we, we thought that- uh, Well, villains dress better. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, if yeah, someone was know, a sick know. cunt, I thought that was like a, like a compliment. Like, oh, that guy's a fucking- Oh, that guy, yeah, it that is guy's too, a rager. Yeah, sick cunt. You've been watching uh, Chris Lilly, haven't you? You've been watching yeah. Yeah. Summer Heights Heart? Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, he's come on. So he got cancelled. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. No, I'm not going to be someone that got cancelled, but <laughs> maybe for the, his dread, Helmut Newton. Okay. Right. He dies driving in a soft top into Chateau Marmont with two models. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. The best way to go out, man. And like, yes, what, me. What, what man, especially German, can wear like a cut-off denim short and not yeah. like a predator? <laughs> mm. he, he was the best. And his, his personal style was simple. But incredible. The bigger the German, the smaller the speedo. You know, you know when um, when they redid the chateau, the whole brief was helmet can't notice that we've redone it. Oh, really? <laughs> That's it. We're gonna redo it, but helmet can't notice when he stays. Wow. He used to stay there for four months of the year of year. <laughs> um, yo, you were originally supposed to be a wine, or you originally you were your plan was to be a winemaker. Yeah, why I don't did, know why if it was my plan, but I definitely went down that path. Was that was it just so you could drink wine? Like, why yeah. did that work out? Uh, man, I grew up so I grew up in the place I grew up with is really famous for wine and, and crystal meth. My and yeah, and now it's been famous in bikies and crystal meth and, and horrible football clubs. But I, um, you know, like after school, I knew that I was I was just I shouldn't go traveling straight after school. It would have been a nightmare. Like I wasn't ready. Yeah, and um, and my family are all either farmers or lawyers. And I sort of said, Dad, what should I do after school? And he's like, well, you're not going to get into law because you're dyslexic. <laughs> you essentially can't spell. Um, <laughs> That's a barrier like, Why not sure. do winemaking? Because it's a famous wine region we're from. Mm. And I always like science. Um, a lot. I, I love science. And so I studied science and majored in winemaking, uh, did the course, uh, and then finished and went to work as a winemaker in France. And it was all good, but I wasn't passionate about it. Like mm. I like the science side of it, which sounds super geeky because it all makes sense to me. But the actual wine side, like most winemakers I know, and I know a lot of good ones, but you have to be so passionate right. about that to make that happen. You generally end up being a teetotaler or <laughs> alcoholic yeah, sure. and you're stuck in a shadow day. So you've got to really love it. Um, so it wasn't for me and, and, and I was in France and I remember calling my brother and going, shit, I don't, I don't know what to do. He was in London and he said, just why don't you apply for art college? You've always wanted to do that. Um, and so that's sort of how it happened that way. But, you know, I enjoyed it. And I met my business partner, Tom, studying wine. And we still release a couple of wines a year with P. Johnson. Oh, cool. and it's really, we do these projects where we'll find. P. Juice. Wine, mm. yeah, P. P. Juice. P. Juice. Now we do. We do. <laughs> we'll, we'll rethink that. That could be misconstrued. But, <laughs> P. Juice uh, no, on. We, we kind of Johnson find, Juice. Yeah, we'll no, find we'll also rethink yeah. that. Someone we think is doing a really incredible thing and, and go to them and do a little project and 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 just it's just for our clients. Right. So we do that every year. So I still I still like it, but I actually developed an allergy to wine. Oh shit. Yeah, from, drink, from a, drinking too much. No, I was in an accident <laughs> in the winery. I was in a chemical accident. Yeah, it was um So you're the joker of wine. You fell into yeah. a vat yeah, and like no my only superpowers were <laughs> <like> eczema. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll scratch you to death. Yeah, I'll just bleed on you. Yeah. Um, so it kind of my hand was kind of damn. Was mm. forced, Damn, which is good. Well, ultimately a good thing. Yeah, um, it all worked out. And you know, while we're talking about your personal life, you are wifed up. Yeah, yeah what I, was the, I wifed early? What was the fit that you wore on your first date? Fuck, first date it was a long time ago. Um, probably something slightly slimmer than I wear now. <laughs> it was in London. Actual first date date. Yeah, I, I actually remember what I wore because I like I dressed up a bit. Of course. And I wore this jacket from Connolly, like old Connolly when Joseph was still around. Mm. Um, and it was really loose kind of shirt jacket. I obviously bought in the sale because I had no money <laughs> then. Uh, and I would have probably worn a, a cheap T-shirt from somewhere. I imagine a white, Chris white T-shirt and a pair of baggy trousers. I okay. Imagine. All right. That and it worked. Been. Yeah. Against you know, all odds. I rode a scooter everywhere. So I literally wore that and I had this Macintosh Mac, which I also bought from the old Connolly in the sale. Okay. And I used to just wear that when it got cold. And then, yeah, that was it. So, yeah. 
Damn. It paid off. Did she low-key think she was getting set up to uh, just get drinks with her gay bestie when she heard that you're a clothing designer? You know what? Like, actually, we met before that. And like a good Aussie, I met at a pub in Notting Hill. <laughs> and I had a girlfriend at the time when we met. Oh, no. But like, we chatted for ages and really hit it off. And, you know, it was sort of love at first sight, at least for me. I sure. Don't know, but, uh, yeah. And I just chipped away. Yeah. Mm. And that was back when you used to poke people on Facebook. Oh, how many no. Times you, how I many times did you poke your wife? <laughs> <laughs> She was she, yeah. she was bruised from all the poking, yeah. but um, slow and steady, like building your yeah, business, you know, yeah. just you know, like I, a turtle. So I went to meet her. I said, "Let's have a drink." It was you know she'd been traveling and came back, and and she rocked up with like an armada of women with her. Oh because shit! She thought she was meeting a guy with a girlfriend. There's like six friends of hers, and she was like, "Oh, so how's your girlfriend?" I was like, "Oh no, we broke up." And I went to the loo, came back, boom, just her. <laughs> <laughs> like, She's like, "I don't need you anymore." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we kind of. Weirdly, just, you know, I was single for like seven years in London and sort of in and out of relationships, some unsuccessful ones, and I apologize. But, <laughs> but, um, but the second I met her, I was like, bang, done. Right. Mm. That was it. So it's nice. That is early. Love. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Love. At first sight, like we said. Yeah. Love. Uh, Patrick, how much money do you make? To, like today? Yeah. How much money? I've got no idea, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you like to spend your money on besides? Vintage clothing. Uh, school fees a bit. Um, yeah. Okay. What do I like to spend my money on? Such your kids. Yeah. Family aside. No, I'm joking. Um, probably art, really. Yeah. yeah. My main thing and, and furniture. Yeah. Art. As like investment pieces or as I like- don't, I don't, don't invest in art, man. Like I'm not selling art that I buy. I'm not that guy. Like you invest in the artists. Like it's a long way from art school to like the National Gallery anywhere. So right. if you want these artists to survive, you got to buy their work and go on the journey with them. So contemporary art. Um, American artists, Australian? You know, mostly Australian. Mm. Like really just that's just because where we're, where, where we're mostly situated. A little bit of American. Um a little bit of French, but mostly uh, mostly Australian art. And, yeah, that's kind of where we'll go with it quite a lot. And then furniture a lot. And then a lot of books and magazines. Mm. <laughs> like, I mean, like really heavy archive shit, literally. magazines. Yeah, yeah. Archive yeah, yeah, magazines. yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavy shit, yeah. yeah. No, like, uh, like heavy like And then wise. I collect some other things like weird things. Like I'm obsessed with glassware, so I collect old Venetian glassware, which sounds – Makes me sound even camper, <laughs> um, but it's really cool. Um, and then I collect like Joe Colombo did this glass called the Smoking Glass, which is designed so he did one with Riedel and one with an Italian glass company, and designed so you can hold it and smoke a cigarette. Yeah, I don't know why, but I'm obsessively <laughs> collected. Like, Are you a big dart blaster? No, not a dart blaster. No, I not. No, I never really. The, the old asthma stopped me from the dart okay. blasting, but. You can't smoke in Australia anymore. It's really? Not, it's just not a thing. Like it's so expensive to smoke. Because you guys it's are essentially that healthy? Yeah. No, because the government's made it like $100 for a packet of cigarettes. Mm, Got it. Worth every penny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, for you guys, it's like half price because the exchange rates. Yeah, and even, I mean, that's the thing here. Like the syntax on cigarettes in New York, people complain that a pack is like way yeah, too much. So they, they've, 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 they've sort of tried to make it impossible. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. uh, we got the glasses. Not, if you're not spending, cigs. yeah, you're not spending money on cigs. Spending money on glass and art, clothing-wise, in your lifetime, how much do you estimate that you've spent on clothes? Well, I, I'm cheating because, like, I make my own clothes. So you're like, oh, that's a sample. But in terms <laughs> of vintage clothing, that, yeah. that'd be terrifying. I would not want to know that. Million. I've got a men. I've got a men's and women's archive. A million dollars. Oh, I doubt that. Clo no. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> That was, easy, easy. That was a quick yeah, yeah, yeah. turnaround. Quick yeah. math, but Aussie dollars, yeah. Aussie dollars. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But maybe a bit, a bit more. But like, <laughs> you know, it's, you're, you're, it's a journey. I mean, we could see reevaluating yeah. things in your head you're, right now. I'm thinking, it's like, you're investing in your business. Exactly, it's an investment in the future. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. books are like even worse, aren't they? If you're not going to save gone. Arnie's, who is? Yeah, yeah well, no one's gone. It's dead. I mean, like save the archive. You know, yeah, it's so good. Do you have a favorite vintage like uh, men's fashion magazine? Like people obviously love Luomo Vogue and collect that. Like, is there one for yeah. you that's the best? I ever? mean, I do love that. That's amazing. Pre like probably ninety five, and then it got a bit weird. <laughs> um, I mean, I mainly like collect interior magazines again. Mm. Like my favorite magazine of all time is from New York called Nest. Okay, just the best ever magazine. Go check it out. Jo I think it was Joseph Hoffman who did it. It's so good. Nest just, magazine. Okay. Nest magazine is the best. Okay. Like just the Nest is the best. best. Um, but like vintage clothing magazine. 
I like I like all the old catalogs. I like, yeah, I quite like the old catalog, and they've become a thing now. So they almost like aren't cool anymore. But like the old J Crew catalogs and all those ones, I used to love. Like they just brought it back for people that? like you. I saw that right, and now I'm kind of like, no, I'm going to give them a rest yeah. for a while. Yeah, <laughs> feels so unique anymore, does it? Land's End catalogs. Yeah, I mean, not really. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Eddie Bauer. I'm not trying to think se- like what not else. Sexy enough, right? <laughs> no, nah, but you know, I get my hit when I go to Tokyo and, mm. and, and you go and, and you go hit the magazines up. They're the best ones there. You go to Jin Bocho. Yeah, I, I, I go to like you know, I go to the classic up in the hills bookstore. Mm. Where I just buy everything and send a big box back. <laughs> um, and so I'm you pay to- a lot of money for shipping. It sounds yeah. like to bring things to Australia. Yeah, but you're and- not going to schlep that all the way to New York oh, and then take so. it back. It costs even more, but also it's a convenience thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Patrick, we've reached the end of our time together. Before we get out of here, we would love to once one final time tap into that big brain of yours that's covered in a luscious mane mm. of golden locks Beautiful. and ask you, do you, successful businessman, successful clothing maker, successful dude all around, do you have any constructive criticism you would like to give us? Constructive criticism I'd like to give you guys? Yeah, we've spent about an yeah. hour and a half together. Yeah, lay it on us, dude. Well, um, where to begin? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't really, you know, it's been great. Come on. Oh, we're perfect? Thank you, Come dude. On. I mean, I wouldn't say you're perfect. <laughs> It'd be pretty boring if you were constructive. You could be wearing a bit more P. Johnson. Uh, right. Hey. Didn't we make your wedding suit? You Where's did. Your... You did. I think you should wear that suit once a week. To, to podcast? What? Why not? Should you wear it to the event tomorrow night? That would be amazing. You know, I actually. I just wear like half or something. During <laughs> during COVID, we did uh, like a live stream. I forget what the charity is for. And I and I wore the tuxedo on the uh on the live stream. That's the only time I've ever you worn a tuxedo. You just wear that podcast. tuxedo every day for a week. <laughs> yeah. See how many people shout at you on the street. Although it's New York. No one would shout at you on the street. Yeah, yeah that's true. No, I think you guys are. All right. More P. Johnson. Okay. More P. Johnson. That's easy. That's we were looking at the site the other day and being like, we were bookmarking a bunch of shit. So I don't think yeah, it'll be hard. I appreciate hard. that. Yeah, of course, man. Also kind of pleasantly surprised at the pricing. Yeah, it's not. It's not crazy. Yeah, we try and keep it. It's like, very accessible. We Fair. try and keep it in the zone. Yeah. Like that's the kind of thing. Like you, if you put yourself up in a certain price category, you Dealing in a certain zone and a certain kind of client all the time, so you don't get like a, a broad spectrum of people, and right. kind of that's what makes it interesting. Because my brother's a long term customer in, in Tower Zone for a minute, and he always uh, kind of did a lot of like made to measure and maybe some bespoke stuff. And so I always just through that assumption or association, always assumed that the price would be a lot higher for the ready to wear. But the ready to wear is like very much, very realistically copable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we try and keep it. <laughs> we try and keep it there, and also you know we're an Australian brand, so we got you know it's um. I think for us, we want to we want to be we want to please everyone. I mean, but a lot of people would find it reasonably expensive as well. I imagine. Yeah, so, of course. You know, you stick in your zone, but Smells it means like we can we can, we can have a broad spectrum of clients, and it's not too. For some people, it's not expensive enough. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't know, but yeah. I can imagine. But you yeah. know, yeah, you know. I mean, I know. Uh, <laughs> Patrick, where can the kids follow you? What would you like to plug? Yeah, for your shit. I don't know. Just uh, drop into one of our stores if you're around. Uh, what to plug? Um, I don't know, come into one of the stores. If you're in New York, just drop in. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days really? a week. <laughs> really? 365 days a year. Uh, you'll get a free coffee. You can come anytime. You need to stay the night. You can stay the night. We have a shower there as well. Oh, There's no, dude. What have you done? Tuesdays. So just come in. Oh, be Pandora's box was just right. open. Come in. Patrick, <laughs> thank time. you. You're the best. Coming dude. on to the only podcast that matters. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Chef, take us out. Thank you.